zeros and x intercept well so many times i have explained this to my students but still they are not very clear about it zeros and x intercepts what is similarity what is difference nobody knows now let me try to make an attempt here to explain this concept let's say this is our coordinate system and let me draw a function here okay this is this our function like this let me draw a function like this right it looks like a even degree function right with positive leading coefficient correct now here these are our zeros correct now since the value of the function at these points is zero we call them zero but since they cross the x axis or they touch the x axis they are also called x intercepts therefore x intercepts and zeros are used interchangeably well it is not wrong but there are some very fine differences now i'll take an example here uh, to show you those differences fx equals to x cube x minus 2 times x square plus 1 look at this function now how will you find zeros of this function so first thing let's try to calculate zeros of this function okay zeros you have to equate each factor to zero and figure it out x cube equals to zero so say x cube equals to zero that means x equals to zero here x minus 2 equals to 0 that means x equals to 2 and how about this place x square plus 1 equals to 0 that means x square equals to minus 1 or x equals to plus minus square root of minus 1 good now this plus minus square root of minus 1 doesn't belong to real numbers correct what is this this is complex number not real okay so what do we conclude we have here two zeros which are real and two which are not real they are complex also notice that these two complex zeros will always be in conjugate pairs plus and minus same value do you get it so one difference which we have just found out here is that the zeros could be real or complex correct correct but x intercepts are real always let me put that word always real okay so that's one difference second now let's try to sketch this graph correct now here let's look into multiplicity of the zeros or order now at x equals to 0 For x cube, we have x equals to zero. What is the multiplicity here? Three. For x minus two equals to zero, at x equals to two, what is the multiplicity here? One. And for x square plus one, we it's a complex, so no point going there, right? We'll only consider the real zeros to sketch our graph, right? Now let's look into n behavior. N behavior. For that, we need degree. And what is the degree? Two times one, three. I mean, two plus one, three. And three plus three, six. So degree is six. How about the leading coefficient? leading coefficient is plus 1 that means even degree and positive leading coefficient correct now in this case when we have even degree and positive leading coefficient we should expect and behavior as 
both sides up. Okay. Now let's make a neat drawing of our function. Here it is. We just draw this graph and point at our zeros. This is one zero at zero, whose multiplicity is three. Is it okay? I'm just writing three to remind you, right? And the second zero is at two. And the multiplicity is just one. End behavior E1. So end behavior is like here to here, right? So the graph will come from here and go there. So quadrant two to quadrant one. Now at this point, since the multiplicity is three, it will behave like a cubic function. So cubic function will be like this, right? And this will behave like a linear function and will just cross like this. Is it okay? So if I join these points, I get my graph. Do you see that? So that's my parabola, or sorry, parabola, it's a polynomial sketch which represents this function fx. Okay? For x. Now, how are zeros different from x intercepts? Well, at this point, you can see that zeros also give you the behavior of the curve at x intercept. If the degree is 3, example here, the, it goes like a cubic function. If the degree is 1, it goes like a linear function. If the degree would have been 2 or 4, it will go like a parabola, like a turn. It will bounce back. So if the degree is odd, it actually goes through. And if degree is even, it bounces back off a of zero, right? So that's how it is, okay? I hope you understand the differences between zeros and x-intercepts. X-intercepts are representation of real zeros. They don't represent the complex zeros at all. And complex zeros are in conjugate pairs. So that is one difference. Second, that zeros give you behavior of the function at the x-intercept. How will they cross this line? Or they will bounce back. This is what a zero identifies. Correct? I hope that helps you in understanding polynomial functions. Great. Have a good day.